Friday night, Kyle Shanahan and John Lynch speak to the media. They look pretty loose. They look pretty comfortable. They looked uh, a lot more at ease than John Lynch looked on Monday talking about Debo Samuel. Kyle Shanahan was asked if uh, they got close to trading Debo Samuel, if any of the offers were anything close to what it would have taken to consider trading Debo Samuel. And Kyle Shanahan said, not even close. With kind of a chuckle, like, yeah, nobody was even in the ballpark. What would you think of uh, what he said? Uh, I I think that it grew on social media, and rightfully so. And it felt like, I, I think when you live in that environment and a story like this takes off, you start talking yourself into this. And by about Tuesday or Wednesday before the first round, there was like 10, 38, Elijah Moore, and next year's second. You're like, God damn, that's a lot. <laughs> I mean, I think I'd pull the trigger. And then it comes out by Friday that the offer from the Jets, which were clearly the only team seriously considering it with their best, you know, they gave the best offer of all the shitty offers, was pick 10 and a fifth rounder for the 49ers, Debo Samuel, and their second rounder, pick 61. I mean, that that offers a joke. But we also saw on, on Thursday that the going rate for Debo Samuel like is somewhat in the ballpark of A.J. Brown, which I think the Eagles feel pretty good about what they had to give up for him, right? Yeah. Which was pick 18, I think, in a third rounder for A.J. Brown. Now, obviously, 10, you'd have to do the math. I think it was like pick 101, so pick 18 and 101, does that equal 10? Like, 10 is worth a lot. So I think that's where the Jets would go. You know, like the Raiders for Devontae Adams. They got 22 and a pick in the 50s, right? The uh, the Packers did. Mm -hmm. Well, if you add that up, it probably doesn't equal 10. So I I bet the Jets' argument is just simply 10 is very, very valuable. And they are kind of right. You know? Like, ultimately, what what the Raiders got for Khalil Mack, those two ones, if you add them up, they're not as high as you think. So where the Jets are coming from, like, we're not giving you two picks in the 20s. We're giving you pick 10. And I think that, I don't think the 49ers had any inclination to ever trade the guy, especially, like, they that was never a thought that crossed their mind until he asked for a trade. And even then, they were clearly a little dumbfounded. But once they started getting offers, once the thing went viral and the other teams kind of caught wind of it, they realized it would make absolutely no, it, it would be, it'd be malpractice to do this given the options that we have and not just write it out. Well, if they had just traded Debo Samuel for the players that the Packers got in the Raiders Devante trade, they would have traded Debo for Quay Walker and Christian Watson. And despite some people maybe liking Christian Watson as a prospect in part because he was in North Dakota state, the Packers had to trade up for that pick, I think though. Right. So that would be an awful return. I, I don't think that was the the Raiders pick though, was it? No, they might have had to move up. But my point is like that, let's just say I'm just giving you a ballpark of of what they got back for Devontae Adams, right? Yeah. Like that would not be in in the hemisphere. That would not that would be met with disapproval. And then and the and then and in their defense, the 49ers wouldn't do that deal. Right. No. They wouldn't no do ch- that deal. No chance. Well, honestly, let's just use the deal that the that the uh because I think the Debo comp of AJ Brown, right? Same draft class, same contract. He got traded for you know a third round pick and Traylon Burks. Would that feel like enough? No. Now it would feel like enough. Part of it feeling like enough is the player. What does that player become? Right. And he was a very intriguing player because he had a lot of comps to Debo, right? Just in terms of the player. I think that number one yak excited. receiver in college football. Yeah. But you would have gone, we basically just traded a known quantity for a major question mark because he's we don't know how good he's going to be. And a third rounder? Like that's I mean, there's a reason that John and Vrabel looked pretty rattled that night because they know how it was going to be perceived, right? Like they understood. They're not And there's the reason Nick Sirianni was saying he goes, uh, you probably saw this, or maybe you maybe you posted it and I that's how I saw it. But his quote was like, Yeah. You know how we have to project A.J. Brown? We don't. We know what he looks like as a pro. There's no guessing. I know exactly what we're getting. We've watched the tape, right? Well, ha- how he said when they threw on A.J. Brown that, you know, they had like they got a they had a meeting once it got serious. And they're like, let's just watch them together. You know, our the assistant GM, me, Sirianni, his, some of his offensive coaches. After like the first game of highlights, Sirianni gets up like, 
guys, I've seen enough. Like what I, I play, I was with the Colts. We played this guy. Like I, we you don't, and how he's like, no, we got to do our due diligence. But I, it was like, wouldn't that be the same thing of Debo Samuel? Like, Hey, we're interested in Debo Samuel throw on the tape. Uh, holy shit. Cause he's yeah. doing it against the Rams, the Titans, the whoever, the Cowboys trailing while very impressive. Like I, I think the two guys that have by far the most pressure of all the skill guys are Traylon Burks, given who he's replacing, and Christian Watson. Fair or not, just because the Packers are so desperate for a wide receiver. If they Debo, also they took another one too, right? They took Romeo Dubs. Yeah, I think but they, he. They but I mean, when you get drafted thirty fourth overall, and he's going to be viewed as just a guy. Now that guy end up, might end up being better than Watson, but the pressure immediately on Watson, I would say, in training camp, if the Niners had got rid of Debo, whoever offensive skill wise they picked with one of those picks high to replace him, the pressure on him, he would have been the, him and Trey Lance would have been the story of camp, right? Yeah, yeah. It would have put a lot more pressure on Trey Lance too. Now, Debo hasn't shown up yet. They haven't signed a contract yet. It hasn't been resolved yet, right? And I think part of what Kyle, part of what I took away from what Kyle Shanahan said on Friday night was like, we are going to fix this. Right. In the same way that a coach comes in and says, I'm going to get my strength and conditioning program in line, or we're going to be about discipline, or we're going to be about running the ball. Like, and that's on them. So that if in three years your program doesn't run the football, or your players don't look better, or your recruiting class rankings aren't better, that's on the coach. The Niners are taking a risk. Maybe they don't view it as a big risk, but they they calculated the risk. The Titans calculated the math and said, We are not going to pay AJ Brown. So let's get something for him. The 49ers have calculated the risk, risk, and Kyle Shanahan believes. Now, maybe they know at the end of the day this is more financial than anything else, but it's it's somewhat interpersonal because Kyle said, you know, it's easy when you're looking at screens and you're on your phone. When you get people in a room and you can just talk to people, we've got a good relationship with him. We know him. He knows us pretty well. Like, that's what they're banking on. Now, maybe they're also banking on putting a piece of paper in front of him with a lot of money on it, and he'll sign it. But part of what Kyle said on Friday was essentially my ability to talk and John's ability to talk and be communicators and essentially do the things that coaches do, which is get people to believe in you and get people to buy in. That's going to win Debo over. Right? And, I, and I do think there is merit to that because I think any time that you spend a lot of time on your phone, that any time that you have a separation from something – your mind wanders, I, whether you're young or you're old. And the one thing that Kyle and John have is they're just, while the season ends for them, their work doesn't end. Like every day is just they're back on the hamster wheel, right, of free agency, the draft, pro days, the combine, owners meetings. Debo's just kind of sitting there. It is kind of a weird, just complete halt for a younger player. And then you're waiting also for your contract. Think how much time there is for him just to think. Right. Because I talk to other people that aren't them. And some of his other friends are going through some weird shit. Right. If let's just assume he's buddies with AJ Brown, they're going through some weird things. And so you're just like, what is going on? You're saying if he's only talking to DK Metcalf, Mm -hmm. AJ Brown, Hollywood Brown, just all his agents, clients. Yeah. Cause I'd say, I think one of the stunning parts of this wasn't just his play, but just the package of Debo Samuel for this season. Right. How, how much fun he was having, how much pride he took coming out the locker room with Trent Williams, like he was, you know, you often say like uh, a guy's the heartbeat of the team, like the Warriors, you know, Curry's the greatest player of all time in the history of the franchise, but Draymond's the heartbeat. And when you watch him, he's like, Draymond takes so much pride in being a warrior. It felt like Debo was like playing a role. Like Kittle has that, right? And Debo had that too. You're like, this guy wants to leave? And then you start doing the natural, and trust me, I did it. Like, well, you know, the taxes, Santa Clara, fuck, I wouldn't want to live there either. And I'm not from, even from Florida, I'm from uh, 30 minutes north. So as you start kind of understanding it, but he hasn't actually tangibly said any of that. People are putting thoughts, and even Kyle tried to kind of poo-poo that. He's like, you know, a lot of things fly. And this gets back to the draft compensation. It was all made up. Every story that came out, and listen, I ran with it like you did, like we all did, because we're like, well, that, is that a good trade? Those were not like 10, 38, and Elijah Moore was nowhere near the trade options. Well, the Elijah Moore thing on the list of the crazy trade offers, that was but on the internet that was believable. floating around there. I know, but but like <laughs> yeah, that one that like could justify once you take 
I guess 10 would. I, I don't think it makes at. sense for the Jets. No, it doesn't. The Jets are not Debo away from being no. good. Like the, Some of these picks were like, I wouldn't do that if I were the Jets. And clearly they thought the same thing. Well, I don't think, let's say Tyree Kill had never been traded to the Dolphins and the Dolphins just had their picks, right? 29, their second round pick, all the stuff that they gave for Tyree Kill. The, the first, the second, the two fours and the sixth. I don't think the Niners could accept that offer for Debo Samuel, right? Because that pick was just their pick. And, you know, they won nine games, so their second-round pick wasn't that terrible. Don't you think people would have freaked out if that was yes the offer? I think they would have freaked out. I don't think they could. I think the difference between them and the Titans is the Titans decided this has gone as far as it can. We're not going to pay him more. He wants more. It's over. The 49ers have not either decided or realized that it's over, right? And maybe it's not over, but I'm just saying the Titans reached a conclusion. It's over. You know who was drafted with the 49ers pick? <laughs> <laughs> they oh, ended up they, I, well they flip-flopped because the chiefs traded up to get mcduffie but cole strange that was that was the 29th pick who they liked the niners liked the niners liked and the rams liked i think a lot of teams liked just in the third round but regardless yeah i'm, I'm with you I, I think them and the and think about this who is ultimately the team that traded for aj brown a team that was desperate for a real wide receiver to go along with their young star wide receiver, right? Right. It was kind of a perfect match. They desperate for an outside wide receiver. They've been looking for this guy for years. They've missed on several picks and it was the perfect match, right? And it was worth it for them to trade a valued pick, right? I mean, I, I, I just think that it all matched up for the Titans and we'll see whether they are proven right. Like there's going to be pressure like ultimately, if AJ Brown doesn't work out, I don't think anyone can fault the Eagles. If Traylon Burks does not turn into a good player, I do think that John will just naturally take some shit from his fan base, right? We didn't need to do this. You didn't need to do it, or if you had done it, you could have got out. There are other trades that would have been out there that didn't involve Traylon Burks, right? Now it made the most sense. I'm just saying if AJ Brown was just open market AJ Brown, what's maybe that's the best offer you could get? 18, and maybe it would have been, right? the best possible offer you could get was the one they got. But, you know, it's kind of the Justin Jefferson, Stephon Diggs one. We don't talk about it at all from the Vikings perspective. They nailed the pick. Now, most guys aren't Justin Jefferson, but they nailed the pick. So, cool. You know, it's it's always easy to talk about after the fact. Well, if, if, you, were the, the if, you, if you were the Jets, obviously you couldn't get Debo for what you were offering. Would you have offered 10 straight up for A.J. Brown? You know, I don't. I don't know I that I would have. I don't think I would have either. Because I think the Jets are not in that place right now. And why wouldn't you just take a young player that you have on a contract for a while that can become your AJ Brown? You already have a and we already have one receiver you really like that could get better, right? So yeah, um, yeah. I I thought they looked confident. Now this is part of what they're being paid for: is their ability to connect with people. But at the end of the day, they're going to have to pay the guy. And we know, based on the A.J. Brown contract, kind of what the realm is. And it's a palatable. I wonder if that's part of why they were more relaxed is because A.J. Brown got paid. And they go, in their minds internally, they said, okay, yeah, we can do. Thank God A.J. Brown didn't just get $70 million guaranteed. I think their greatest attribute is people really like the both guys. And they know deep down they're good at that, right? One thing Kyle Hank has had on is getting along with players. And John Lynch has hung his hat on for his entire life of dealing with other human beings and being a leader and, and resonating with people from, I mean, he said it in his, in his hall of fame speech, he did. like the one unique part about football is he points at Warren Sapp. He points at Derek Brooks. He points at himself. He lists where they're all from their economic backgrounds. And he's, we've been tied at the hip for 25 years. That doesn't happen in another walks of life. And that is the thing with football really two football lifers, right? Kyle, and John, and they, you know, from a football standpoint, I think they love Debo Samuel, right? What he brings. I mean, John talks about all the time his will. Obviously, Kyle from a uh, – who did I hear talking about this? Oh, I heard Matt Ryan was on with Rosillo, and he said the one – he's like, Kyle's greatest strength is he knows his offense so well, his understanding exactly what he wants in players. And I, listen, I mean, I think sometimes a lot of coaches – kind of get generic with stuff where Kyle is very, very specific, right? And it's been clear over the years, like what he likes in certain players and what he really values on his offense, like specifically like their roles, what he needs them to do. Like 
Ayuk, I don't care how good you are after the catch. If you're not blocking, I don't feel you're giving good effort. I'm just not going to play you. Like, that's a huge part of my offense. And the Debo versatility, and obviously we'll talk about it, but, like, they keep drafting running backs for a reason because they run through them. I mean, I actually think the Jets are another good example. Like, they're starting drafting running. Like, you need running backs in the system. You know, look at Mike McDaniel. Like, they've he and just inherits Waddle. He goes gets Tyree Kill. Like, there are certain type players if you want to run this type offense. And Debo is just tailor-made to be a star, which he is. Now, I think the question, just big picture, which will come whenever the contract is signed, like sustaining and being healthy. But that's just part of football. I mean, A.J. Brown has that same question mark, right? He's a guy that's battled injuries. 